Right, we're next on to the next customer's repairs, another Cybernet 134, and it is another Harrier CBX from a gentleman named Scott in uh, Norwich. So, oh, I've sat on the bleed. That doesn't help. He sent the factory original mic with it, which is nice. It mentions it's got a dirty volume control so we should be able to deal with that so I'll plug in the PA speaker and we'll plug in the instrument speaker for the tests and on this set we'll do a a check before opening it up if you've been watching the last couple of on the air tests um, one of the viewers had requested we did low power tests and we have been doing at the five mile point can't do them at the six mile point because of interference to receive from the petrol station near there and I'm going to go and uh, pick up a, another camcorder this afternoon so Mr Chippy can use a camcorder instead of a mobile phone because uh, you know, it was struggling to focus and all that. I'm not a mobile phone person. It's a weird format anyway, but well, it is to me. So we'll stick to Sony camcorders. Right. Um, nothing to beat clearance models in uh, Argos. <laughs> Can you see the Yorkshire bit of me? Right, we'll switch on. We've connected to power actually. That didn't happen. While I was babbling to you, I was supposed to be connecting the power up. So it's come on on 19, and as he says, there's a, a bit of a noisy volume control. Pop it onto PA. Testing 1 2, testing 1 2. So that's fine, and it works on the mic gain control on these sets. We'll put that to full, we'll put RF gain to full, we'll put squelch to minimum, we'll put that tone in the medium, that works. Right, we'll get ourselves a piece of paper, there's usually something kicking around. Something the printer's messed up. Oh, I did those uh, organ stops when I was ordering replacement um, engraved discs. So uh, that's been and done. So we can use that picture. Harrier CBX. We've had three of these, haven't we, in the last few weeks? You know what? Is that seal still intact? I'll zoom in on that before uh, we go uh, into the set. Right, so I'm going to switch picture in picture on, and hopefully we're on the right screen. Well, we're not. Camera two, there we go. So, um, we'll key up. We're going to the low, just doing three watts exactly. So the transmit frequency, let's put that up on the screen for you, is a bit low as you'd expect after 40 years. It's 279095. So that's not illegally low, but it wants pulling up to 279125. Deviation. Well, if this is a sealed set, it's probably about 1.4. Let's have a look. Wah! Oh my goodness. Am I really reading that right? Wah! I've got mic gain at full, haven't I? Wah! I'm just going to get our standard replacement mic um, because that's 0.5. 
just in case there's a mic snag. In fact, I'd rather use the test mic anyway. In fact, when we had COVID, I didn't have any mics here in case they got <laughs> nastiness in them. Wallow. No, look at that. Oh, I'm not even showing you the right screen. So, I'm going to go on to our 0.5 full-scale deflection. So, 0.5 kilohertz is now at the full-scale deflection. Wallow. I'm even going to make sure we are tuned in properly. So, I've got a meet. I've never shown you this before. If you just drop this uh, camera. I'll take, unplug the PA speaker. We've been and done with that. When I can find where it's plugged in. So, this meter below, when we key up and we're in. Uh, what they call the modulation monitor, which is AM and FM. Uh, AM is modulation, and in FM it's deviation. What we have to do is to set that to peak, and it is. You see, I can go off tune. I can go on tune. Wallow. So go back to the five kilohertz setting, so that five is full scale deflection. So we should be round about the two on the I'll just go back to the normal meter instead of five at full scale it should be two around there wallow it's about 0 0.5 I bet it's as quiet as a, net, a mouse no wonder he sent it in for service now then um, and I'd I did feel that uh, PA was a bit quiet, but that's interesting. There may be something amiss. So, um, receive. And that's the door. No, you couldn't make it up. <laughs> that's one of our uh, trade contacts who's uh, in the south, and he <laughs> he's brought a box with about a dozen sets in. I said to everybody, don't bring anything in December, so they've gone and saved them up, haven't they? So I said, well, <laughs> there's about two months' work there at the rate I can do them. While I've got this organ job on, I'm only doing one and a half CBs a week. Um, once we've not got the organ job on, we'll do five a week. So, uh, where were we? We were just about to do... What I've done was to set the signal generator so that it was the same frequency as the radio is, which is 79095. So, we'll now look at the cyanide meter. We will. I don't know where the sensor is, but it's not in there. One day I'll reset that camera. I'll tell you what, I'll try and do it right now. It's an electronic thing. It is... That might have done it. I'll tell you what, that's pretty sensitive. So for 12 dB Synad, now we'll go over to the attenuator so you can see 1 and 0.25. I've only ever seen that on a Bannertone 5 star. Right, so transmit wants pulling up a bit, doesn't it? And, and transmitted audio wants a lot doing to it. But um, we'll go back to the first metre, get the set opened up, turn the volume down, and break this seal. Well, it looks... I said I'd zoom in on this. Well, I don't know about you, but let's see when we take these screws out. He 
these wrap around cases is different on these sets. Right, I'm going to I'm going to keep it on this zoom. I'm going to take away that lid, and then we'll just see how it's hooked on. No, it was broken. It was. It just didn't look it. All right, get those speaker connections off. Back to normal position, and we'll start by making sure the visa is just coming up to lunch time. So I'm going to see if I can get the transmitter done in a few minutes, but without doing it wrongly. So on to earth connection to there, earth the test prod, channel 40 selected, meter on, channel yeah, 40, we'll check it out, resistor 4, should be 4 volts on receive. And when I press transmit, it should be 4 volts. Now I'm just going to bring that one up a fraction. It's the red trimmer. If you overlook this, if you've got it in a car and the temperature's changing, like the dreadful Midland 78 Plus Multi with the blue screen we have in the test car, and I bought three of those. They only work in certain temperatures. We have to leave it on all, all, all day and night in winter. And they're all the same. They're not faulty. Oh, I've gone and taken it away. I'm trying. I'm, trying, I'm a stage ahead of myself. So, that's now set right. I've rechecked receive. And it's still correct. So we go to channel 1. And we need to check it's somewhere between 1.8 and 2.4 something like that that's in receive and in transmit yeah that's now reset so you could have got away with not touching that but you just never know it may not do all the channels uh, in different weather conditions so we won't have changed the power on transmit so Three watts. So we'll run through that without using the tool on an angle. That's that one. That one. Fraction there. And then we need to put these to maximum. You've got to be so quick with this because you don't want to burn out the PA. It cannot source, it cannot sink and source this kind of power, which is now over 4 watts, indefinitely. So 4.8 watts. Is to make the set reliable that it, it, you know, it's able to go over during tune-up. So it's L4 for clockwise. That's the yellow one for 4.4 watts. So that brings it 
down to 4.4 and then you're supposed to turn this one anti-clockwise for 3.8 watts the green one anti-clockwise for 3.8 but we can set it to 4 the reason they have it at 3.8 is so that when they send a container full of 10,000 radios through customs and the customs inspector takes one out at random and checks it if it was 4.0 something watts the whole shipment would be returned as faulty so they always make sure they're set under the supplying dealer is supposed to do a tune-up a pre-delivery inspection but very few dealers do that because they're only interested in box shifting at the cheapest price in fact customers want you to box when I had a television shop in Yorkshire we used to take new sets out of the box PDI them, set them up the power supply, set the power supply up as per the manual, but minus a little bit. Give you an example, Philips G8. See, we're really going back to the 70s here. Philips G8 color television. The power supply, I think, was supposed to be 204 volts. So solid state set, but the power supply was 204 volts. We set it to 197, so the set ran cool. Now, if you rented the set, this type of television and there's a lot of television rental who knows this if you rented it, the renting dealer would set it to 197 so the set ran cool and was more reliable but if you bought the set and Comet were the worst for this they'd have made sure that the power supply was set at like 212 volts and the thing would run hot and, it, and you'd have you know, usual month out of warranty and the thing would want parts so you know we always set them low and this is what you're supposed to do as a dealer, but no, it's all box shifting, and they don't care an iota. So, well, that's because the customers don't. They just want the cheapest price. They don't want to pay recommended price and have some value-added service. And there is a Lincolnshire CB shop near Gainsborough that seems to still do a PDI. Right, uh, back to the radio. That's now set for 4 watts. Let's do low power especially as we're going to be testing it on low power so if I switch low power on the radio we've got nothing now these can be dirty and sometimes they can even have to be replaced this is the preset for low power There we are, bang on, 400 milliwatts. I'm going to take a break at this point. So just to finish talking about the transmitter, I obviously need to do deviation, the meter setting. We'll do the meter setting now. You've always got to remember to do it on channel 20, the uh, adjustments for the transmitter, having done the VCO on channel 40 and channel 1. So the meter setting... banging across 4 watts actually it's not quite doing 4 watts now so we'll just bring that up a bit Right, um, check low power, still low power. Check four watts is still four watts on the meter. Yep. Now I am a bit worried about this deviation. It's so low. Wallow. So I just don't want there to be a, a faulty component. So we need to set this up. I always set the what I'm going to call the feedy backy one to the centre position. It's not in the right position that. 
now we'll set the deviation properly and lose all the screws. Well, I've managed to find three of them. Oh no, four, five. Anything that lands on the floor, the mice will eat. Right, um, bu -bu -bum, where are we? Deviation. So that's brought us up to 1.6-ish. That's normal enough. Wow, it needs to be a little tiny bit more. Wallow. That's it. Oh, well, just out of adjustment. I, you know, I was beginning to think it was so low at 0.5, whether it was actually... That's the same pot of screws. You know, I've tried glass pots. somewhere sillier I suppose there we go transmitter is just wants the frequency trimming so let's do that so it has changed a bit since it's warmed up A little bit too high. I do like to set them slightly high. Oh, yeah, that's ideal. 79127. So it's now 4 watts. It's now 79125. It's now 2.2, .2, peaking at 2.5 kHz. Receives already okay, but we're going to go through it anyway. So we'll start off with putting the oscilloscope on and putting a 100 microvolt signal on the signal generator which is equivalent to S9 on a CB in the UK. <clears throat> now we'll set the signal generator to the exact frequency because when we did the initial test we set it to what the radio was working on. It will deal with that volume control as well. Oh, they're those sealed ones. You've got to mess with them through the front panel. I can't do that this instant. Just can't kind of get it where I want it. Right, the detector coil or demodulator, call it what you will. Very, very minute adjustment there. So we're putting the sign ad meter now. Turn the oscilloscope off. Sign ad meter. Set it to about 4 dB so we're not saturating the receiver. We get the extra receive circuit in this model. No adjustment necessary. No adjustment necessary. No adjustment necessary. Biggest signal for the next one. No adjustment. Could have been a minute one there. It'll just be the same.
It's unbelievable this set. Yeah, 0 0.25 microvolts. So it's going to be exactly the same. Fantastic. Let's see what we can hear it down to. I'll take the test set attenuator down another level. We don't normally have it at 0 0.3. So now we've got full scale 0 0.3, 0 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.1. I can just hear that at 0.1. I'm going to change the tone so we can prove that we're doing that. Musical note instead, 300 hertz. Yeah, unbelievable. Right, we'll get to the reality and we'll do the S meter. So I want it to read S9 with the... It's exactly S9. It's absolutely as it should be. Uh, so if we needed to adjust it, we'd have adjusted the preset there. That leaves us with the squelch. So I'm going to set the squelch to full on the radio. And I want to once again advance the attenuator control on the signal generator till we get to 100 microvolts S9 again and then the squall should open it does, it doesn't need adjusting the squelch adjustment is there so that's two things we're not needed to touch now we're going to test the squelch at the bottom end so I'll switch the signal generator to standby we're going to turn the squelch down on the radio we'll set that to threshold now I've parked the signal generator at 0.3 of a microvolt switch the signal generator back on. Now we'll see what point the signal generator opens the squelch. 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, 0 0.38. So point 0.4 it's opening and it's dropping off at point 0.3. They're never the best squelch in the world but they're adequate and that's it. We're done. What a lovely radio. I often wish given half an inch more wire on these. There we go. I'll put as many screws in as I can find immediately. <laughs> yeah, it does match up pretty well that um, that seal. So I'll put these four in, but not tightly. And if we've ended up losing any of his screws, well, he'll get some brand new ones for free. Another two. Once again, we'll try and do a low power test when I do the on the air test with Mr. Chippy. 
Right, so we'll unplug the test equipment from the aerial socket and we'll swap that for the aerial on the roof, which I've said a million times is an Antron 99 type of thing. Take the extension speaker out. I'm going to put the PA speaker back in. want to listen to the two mics. So this is our test mic. It's, oops, get the volume down to that level. And now we'll swap it for the factory original mic. Which if it's working okay it can stay on for the on the air test. Testing one two three four five five four three two one bit less um, a bit, bit closer speaking on that one so let's see how we go listening to ourselves on channel 20 testing one two testing one two three four five and again we'll swap mics over One, two, three, four, five. There's nothing there's nothing in it. One on the Roger. Nineteen or Roger. Okay, there we are. Another Harrier CBX. So, just to recap, bit off frequency because it's not been really touched. Deviation ridiculously low at 0.5 kilohertz. Uh, receiver, I couldn't make any improvement. 0.25 for 12 microvolts is absolutely unreal. That's fantastic. And we brought the three watts up to four watts. So I'll be looking forward to doing an on the air test with Mr. Chippy and adding in the new bit where we do low power and we're going to try and do that whenever possible and you know what when it comes to um, better weather because we're first of February today um, he does these tests Mr Chippy does the on the air tests at 7.30 in the evening and um, you know as it gets lighter um, I'll make sure that he uh, records the outside of the car you know, just where he's stationary. So there you have it. The Harrier CBX, another 1981 Cybernet 134 set. Back in the living. Thanks for watching.